Well, hello there, and thank you for coming by the Ramsey Channel. I am glad that you did. And today we are taking a look at a uh, recently published tarot deck by the occultist Travis McHenry, who I'm a big fan of. I've purchased a lot of his uh, tarot decks um, and uh, one of his oracle decks, too. Um, and I always enjoy his stuff. It's never particularly traditional tarot or anything like that, but he always puts a unique spin on things. And uh, this deck here, published by Rockpool, is uh, Magicians, Martyrs, and Madmen. Uh, maybe a more accurate name for it would be the Weirdos Tarot, uh, because that's what everybody in this deck actually is, is a, is a weirdo. Uh, and honestly, I enjoy this, this deck quite a bit. It's not a deck I'm ever going to read with. Not sure really what purpose it would serve. Uh, but um, it's, it's, a fascinating, it's a fascinating deck. Here is the interior of the box. You see it comes with a ribbon pool. And here is really what uh, what makes the deck uh, worth the price of admission for me is the book. Travis always provides you with one hell of a book. And, uh, you know, when you buy one of his books or one of his decks, for me, the great pleasure is, is, is reading the accompanying books because they're always well-researched. They're always thorough. You almost always learn something fascinating. And uh, this one's no exception. And you see that Rockpool formats these very beautifully in their full color. And I thoroughly enjoyed this book. And I learned uh, a lot of interesting facts about people that I had never heard of. Many of the people in here will be familiar. Um, there, there's some pretty famous characters in here, in, including uh, uh, John D. and Edward Kelly and Aleister Crawley, Rasputin, uh, Elizabeth Bathory. Joan of Arc, uh, St. Agnes. Uh, there, there, there's, there's all sorts of famous people in here that you may have heard of, but there's also some, there's Travis there. Um, there's also a, a lot of uh, real oddball folks that you've probably never heard of before. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed the book. In fact, uh, reading the books is one of the primary reasons why I like to buy Travis's decks. So let's get the uh, actual tarot deck out of the box. And as you see, this one has gold gilding on the deck's edges. And it's a nice deck. The cardstock is quality. It's typical of what you find in the in the decks from uh, Rockpool. I always like the gilding. And uh, so our fool is James Douglas, and he was a nasty little bastard. Uh, yeah. I, I can't begin to describe all of the people that, that occur in this deck. You're just going to have to buy this and, and read read the descriptions of these folks for yourself. But I can tell you that uh, some of them are almost beyond belief. Here we have um, Dr. Faust, and he takes the role of our magician. Here we have Marie Laveau. Actually, both of the Laveaux, the famous uh, voodoo priestesses. And they are the high priestesses in this deck. Here we have good old Elizabeth Bathory taking herself a nice bloodbath. Um, ain't that something? I love the artwork on these cards. I forget the name of the artist who, who did this for Travis, but uh, the artwork is very good. And here taking a break from his fiddling or lyre playing, if you will, is uh, the Emperor Nero. And he is the emperor in this deck. Torquemada. Burning an innocent person at the stake. Uh, it's interesting the role that uh, Christianity plays in this deck. And uh, Christianity is more or less uh, the villain because they slaughtered so many innocent people. And uh, that's certainly uh, brought to light in this deck. Uh, I cannot pronounce their names, but this is the first of the uh, lover's cards. This one has three lover's cards. This is the female female. Lover's card. This is the traditional lover's card. And look at who we have. We have Ava and Juan Perón. There's there's Ava herself on the uh, balcony of the Casa Rosada. Uh, famous scene in the musical of Vida as well, of course. Um, but uh, I thought that was a really interesting choice. Ava and Juan is the lovers. And then here we have uh, Sergius and Bacchus is our uh, male lovers. So, pretty nice to have that. You can you can leave all three of these in there if you want to, or I guess if you were actually going to read with this deck, you could uh, you could 
take two of them out and keep the one that you identify with. So uh, here we have Pedro de Alvaro. Al I, I can't pronounce it. A lot of the people in here I'm not going to be able to pronounce. Uh, Peter Stump, the werewolf. I remember reading about Peter Stump when I was a kid and kind of getting freaked out by him. Um, don't think he was really a werewolf because I frankly don't believe in werewolves. Uh, but um, that was his reputation, and he was certainly a murderer, and here he is represented in this deck. Isn't, isn't the artwork on these absolutely beautiful as well? Edward Kelly, you know, and and what, what, what would the deck be if we didn't have John D? So there's John and Edward Kelly as the Hermit and the Wheel of Fortune, and we see the Sigillum Dameth there uh, behind Dr. D uh, representing our Wheel of Fortune. But those are some great cards. Uh, I was delighted to see those two guys in this deck. Uh, and, I, I, you know, I never thought about the Stiglum to Ameth representing a Wheel of Fortune. But, you know, it absolutely does. And uh, Travis, very, uh, very perceptive there with the choice of that. Matthew Hopkins, a uh, another famous Christian murderer uh, who uh, killed a lot of innocent people um, under the name of uh, Saving Their Souls. Filthy bastard. And here our hangman cord is, I can't pronounce it. Jack the Ripper is our death card, and that seems quite appropriate to me. Focus. There we go, that's our temperance card. And you know what, I can't remember the description about her as to what she did exactly. Here's our devil card, Delphine Lalari. H. H. Holmes and his, his 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 crazy house and hotel that he built and tortured people in, and that is our tower. Which uh, you know, when you think about it, that makes sense. Here's old Bloody Mary herself. Bloody Mary is our star card. Isn't this artwork just absolutely beautiful? I think this is probably the, the prettiest artwork of any of the decks that Travis has put together. Uh, here's Rasputin as the moon. He certainly did in uh, Tsar Nicholas and his family. The Marquis de Sade is the sun. Everybody having a good time there. The Bloody Benders. Good Lord. That's our judgment card. And if you've, if, if you're familiar with their story, uh, I, I knew about the bloody benders. Um, a, a, a family of murderers is what they were. And uh, our world card ending up the minor or the major arcana is Alistair Crowley. And everybody's familiar with good old uncle Al there. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out, is he one of the magicians? Is he one of the madmen, or is he in some ways a martyr? Maybe he fits all three categories. Um, uh, now, here is uh, St. Agatha, Agatha of Sicily. She has a pretty interesting story. Her her breast was taken off with a hot tonsor. Um, I can't begin to pronounce this last name, but it's isn't that a pretty card? Almost has a pre-Raphaelite art style there about it. Margaret Laurenti is our Three of Cups. Obviously one of the martyr-type cards. Mesmer! If you've been mesmerized, you can thank Franz Mesmer for it and um, come into focus, you son of a bitch. And uh, a fascinating character, and his, his research itself was fascinating. She's getting tossed off the bridge there. It's it's good old Agnes Barnauer. Nicholas Flamel, the, uh, the famous alchemist. I guess you'd call him a magician because uh, he wasn't exactly a madman. He was a genius. There's Houdini doing one of his escape tricks and he's our seven of cups, our eight of cups. Here is uh, Thomas Baker being cooked alive. Ugh, what a way to meet your end. Cook him up as a stew. Alexander Pierce is our nine of cups. The Sonny Bean Clan. That was an interesting story. I'd never heard of them. They're representing our Ten of Cups here. You're going to be entertained by this deck, trust me. Our Page of Cups is Frederick Santee. I'd never heard of Frederick Santee. Uh, I read a little bit about him in the, in the book there. Interesting character. 
Don't ask me how to pronounce it, but isn't the artwork pretty? The Knight of Cups. Queen of Cups. Oh, the good old pirate. There's Blackbeard himself, Edward Teach. He's the King of Cups. Looks like he's having some nice pirate coffee there. Vinnie Fisher is our Ace of Pentacles. Never heard of this one before. That's the Two of Pentacles. Don't ask me how to pronounce the name again. Christopher Heisman is the Three of Pentacles, conjuring up the very living devil there. Don't know much about this one at all, but she's the Four of Pentacles. The Donner Party. Guess who's coming to dinner and guess who's not coming back from dinner. Uh, here they are having a little cannibalism party. Six of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles. That weird. The Nine. The Ten. Helen Duncan. This is uh, representing ectoplasm coming out of her. She was a uh, psychic medium, I guess, a physical, a physically manifesting medium. Strange lady. She's our Ten of Pentacles. Samuel Little McGregor Mathers, the uh, one of the three founders, uh, along with uh, Wynn and Westcott of the uh, Golden Dawn, uh, which factors back to the Aleister Crowley world card there, I suppose, in some ways. But uh, there's old Sam Mathers. I wish it would have had his wife in it. I've got another deck that has Samuel Mathers in it. I think it's the Illuminati Tarot, uh, and his wife's in it as well. Boyna, was it? Mona, something like that. Being cooked inside a brazen bowl. Look at the fire under it. And this is a some kind of a brass or metal bowl. And they're cooking him up in there. That's not a barbecue that I would want to attend. The Queen of Pentacles. King of Pentacles. The Ace of Swords. Put your head in the air and wave it like you just don't care. Thomas More, Catholic martyr there, beheaded. Ivan the Terrible, Russian monster. Canis Kelpius. Focus, our Five of Swords. I can't pronounce that one, and I can't exactly... I know that he was badly am injured and he just kept attacking and this guy wouldn't die. I, I remember reading the, the, the story in the book about that one. I, I need to go back and reread it again. The Titanic is our Six of Swords and if you think about the traditional Six of Swords cards in the in the uh, Rider Waite decks this one makes sense. I can't pronounce so many of these. Seven of Swords. Eight of Swords. I'm just going to kind of rush through the rest of these. The Livonian Werewolf is the Nine of Swords. Bridget Bishop is our Ten of Swords. And there she hangs, another innocent victim of the church. Chief Leather Lips. How'd you like to go through your life with a name like Chief Leather Lips? There's old Lizzie Borden about to give her father a whack. Uh, not really a historically accurate card because he was on the, uh, the sofa or love seat. In the uh, in the parlor room in the house, he wasn't sitting up in a chair like that. But you get the idea that she just hacked into dad there. Richard the Third is our King of Swords. Roger Bolingbroke. I have no idea why this looks the way it does. Uh, I guess this is Roger down here. Uh, strange looking card. This man, uh, Court de Gamblin, is. Um, basically responsible for the terror resurgence uh, that uh, he, he was really the first one to, to connect the tarot cards with anything to do with the esoteric. Uh, and he, he started reading the tarot cards in the esoteric way, and we owe a lot of what we do today with tarot cards to this gentleman. So I thought that's pretty cool that he gets his own card in this deck here from Travis. St. Guinefort. Oh, 
Bryce Putin's buddy there, Nicholas II, although I don't think they was uh, they were really buddies. He was more a friend of Alexandria than he was of, of, of Nicholas. But there's that poor unfortunate family. Golly. And isn't that a beautiful portrait? Jan Hus there. Getting burned at the stake. What else is new? We all know Nostradamus there, Six of Wands. Charles Luanga is our Seven of Wands. Martyr, I believe. St. Sebastian, certainly a martyr. Um, penetrated by all those arrows, and none of them hit a vital organ, and he lived through that. But uh, ended up dying a martyr's death anyway. So there's St. Sebastian is our Eight of Wands. Uh, which is interesting, you know, because... Our, our wands, or arrows in this case, that are normally flying through the air, they've stopped here in a living victim. Uh, I thought that was an interesting take on, on the wands card there. I can't remember too much about what I read about this one in the book. I'd never heard of it. Here is our ten of wands, another victim. Mervyn Touche there is the page of wands. Looks like we're up to some gay shit there. Hooray. St. Joan of Arc there is our Knight of Wands. Madame Lenormand, who um, his, his methods of reading we still use today. I've got I've got a Lenormand deck or two. Uh, good stuff, and I think it's really cool that she's in this deck. And finally, I think uh, Travis may be saluting himself here with... Uh, Vlad Dracula being the King of Wands. But anyway, there you go. That's a complete trip through the Magicians, Martyrs, and Mad Men Tarot deck. And I want to go back and give you the name of the illustrator of this deck if I can find it in here. Let me see if I can locate uh, who, who, uh, who the artist was. And, you know, they're not given good credit to who the author is chose for the uh, for the illustrator of this deck and I can't find it so I'm sorry that I cannot tell you who did these beautiful illustrations for this deck maybe it's on the back but I don't think it is I remember I had a hard time trying to figure out who did these illustrations but they're really good and it is all the same artist I watched a video Travis did about this deck and it is all the same artist and uh, I think that's one of the reasons why the deck just comes across so well, is it's all drawn by the same individual. Travis did a great job designing the deck, and the artist did a magnificent job with this gorgeous artwork. I'd like to have some of these as prints to hang on my wall. Not the grisly ones. I don't want naked Elizabeth Bathory bathing in blood on my wall, but some of them are pretty enough to hang up. So anyway, there you go. Toby has slept through this one, so we're not going to have an appearance from the cat today. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I'm glad that you did, and uh, I hope to see you on another video again really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.